Good morning and warm welcome to every every one of you. Um, hope you're having a good weekend and a good Sunday. Hope you're staying strong. Um, so let us uh, proceed to the communion and uh, we'll go from there. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come in that mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus. I glorify and I praise your holy name. You are worthy to be praised and worthy to be glorified and worthy to be honored, O Lord. Incomparable Master, wonderful Savior. Glory to the name of the living God. I thank you, wonderful Lord. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to partake of the Holy Communion. And as we drink and as we eat this morning, I bring the emblems in the various homes, the representations of the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. I dedicate those emblems. I consecrate it in the name of Jesus. And as we drink and we eat, we remember Jesus this morning. When he sat with his disciples and he took the bread and he broke it and he passed it around and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same manner he took the cup of wine and he passed the wine around, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you for the remission of your sins. Holy Father, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the body of Christ. As we drink and we eat, we do this not lightly. We think of Jesus. We remember our Lord and our Savior, the glorious one the King of all kings and the Lamb of God, the Lord of all lords. As we drink and we eat this morning, we remember the Lord and we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for laying down your life, for paying that final, sac fi final price, that final sacrifice that has, sh that has set us free from our sins. Thank you, Lord. We remember you, Lord Jesus, and we give you thanks. As the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus enters our physical bodies right now, according to the word of God, the blood of Jesus cleanses us of all unrighteousness, sickness, unrighteous sickness and disease. You will be cleansed by the power in the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, we are favored. We are protected, we are healed, we are delivered, and we have great abundance through the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood of God. Thank you for the body. As we drink and we eat this morning, we remember Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may partake. So good morning once again, especially for those that have uh, joined us now. I hope you guys are staying strong. And um, with regard to the um, a recent graduation of Pastor Yvonne, I'll use that word graduation. She's graduated to a higher plane. She's gone to heaven. She's now with the Lord that she loved so much. So, you know, when Paul said in the Bible, to die is gain. So she has gained. Paul looked at it as gain. We, we mourn a loss from a physical perspective, from an emotional perspective, but we at the same time rejoice because she's with the Lord, the one that she spent so much of time with. So um, today, as you can see by the title, titled Like an Ox, um, it's partially related to the transition in our ministry right now in our lives. And to every one of you that have, he has been affected. So let's talk um, about being like an ox or like an ox. You know, about five months ago, this is about the main time of the, um, the height of the lockdown, the height of the coronavirus. I got a word from the Lord 
and I heard it so many times. And the word was, I need to be as strong as an ox. About five months ago. And I kept on hearing it and kept on getting it to an extent where I started to pray it every single morning for the last five months. I've been praying and declaring over myself, Lord, give me the strength like that of an ox. I declare my body, my physical body, my spiritual uh, capacity, my spiritual body is like that of an ox. I pray this continually. I remember even sharing this with Pastor Yvonne at some stage. And um, when I look back now, I realize <clears throat> this was preparation because her passing away was a, a great shock to all of us. Um, myself, of course, a great shock. And um, and the family was, and the uh, members of the, of the ministry, greatly shocked, tremendous grieving and mourning, utter disbelief, how can this really be, and that kind of thing. And I realized I had to now pick up the pieces and be strong for the family, my immediate family, the extended church family, and Yvonne's um, family on her side, and my my family, my my uh, siblings. Everyone was in great shock, and um, so I was supposed to be the most affected, and now I had to hold them all together. And. And when this happened, and I shared this on Thursday uh, night at the prayer meeting, that um, um, the word that came to me on Saturday when I when we uh, when this happened on the seventh of uh, November, and that was First Corinthians fifteen fifty five, which states, "Where O death, where is where is your sting?" And the Lord clearly told me, "This death will not sting you." Something that I could not even fathom or understand at that point in time because I was so, I would use the word devastated. And um, I realized that God had been preparing me for a number of months now for this. Not to my knowledge, of course. And there was also many things that had occurred and happened in the last few months. Now that we look back, we realize these, these were all signs that we did not see at the time. But God was in the preparation mode giving us, God preparing us. Anyway, um, so when the time came, <clears throat> this affected me, as you can well imagine, but I somehow kept it all together. Somehow I went and did what I had to do and still doing it and holding the family together and trying to hold the church together. It's like comforting someone in the spirit, you know. So God has strengthened me for this. And I, if you remember when we spoke in Rosh Hashanah, the message in Rosh Hashanah, part of the message, however briefly, was about the ox. That's the time we're coming to now. So that's also part of the confirmation of what God is saying, was saying unto me. So being like that has kept me quite strong. I'm still, um, I get emotional here and there. It affects me because there is that uh, we knew each other for 31 years. I knew Pastor Yvonne from the time when she was a 19-year-old girl. So it's a long time until when she uh, passed on, which was the fifth year, so it was 31 years. So it's a long time then we grew up, we, we, when she grew into, we grew together. So um, coming back to all of this, um, God has strengthened me and prepared me for a time like this. And um, it's not easy, this transition is quite, quite difficult, but with the strength of the Holy Spirit, I'm able to pass through. And the only thing that has been sustaining myself, Yashin and Yugeshin, and even Kerasa, where we spend a lot of, a great deal of time in prayer, and I encourage all of you to do the same, and more so now, and even little Kerasa, we spend a lot of time with her and praying for her, and teaching her more to pray now, because that seems to comfort her. So God has strengthened us. And so I'm going to talk to you about the, the characteristics of an ox. How does this apply to us? It's like God had prepared me for this because he knew obviously that he was going to call a home at a certain time. When you're born, there's a certain amount of days that are allotted to you. And um, when that time is up, and I've said this so many times in so many sermons, that will happen. COVID-19 or no COVID-19, if your time comes, your time comes. We've also had, by the way, lots of revelation and visionary confirmation about what has happened, 
pure understanding from God. If those of you are interested in that, I'll send you the revelations that we've had, the visions that people had, confirmation that really blew us away, you know. So nevertheless, so we're going to talk about the qualities of an ox or being like an ox. And um, remember, that is the word the Lord gave me directly. And that which comes upon me will invariably affect you because that which I speak from the pulpit, that which flows down Aaron's beard will eventually go down to his body. If you pour oil on, on, on someone's head, enough of it, it will pass from the head and go into the body. So same likewise. So that which affects me will affect you as it has, as you can see recently. Whether it's good or bad, it will affect you. And that which I say will also affect you. The seed that I sow into your lives each and every week is a seed that comes from my spirit that God would feed and I will feed you the same thing. So when God gave me that word that I need to be as strong as an ox, so I'm, to you, I'm going to talk to you about the characteristics, characteristics of an ox, how it applies to our lives because this will strengthen us and prepare us for the year that's coming up, the new year, which is actually technically already started, but the um, the Gregorian or the, the year that we all follow that starts on the 1st of January. So what are the characteristics of an ox and how can we apply this? I'm going to read from Ezekiel 1 verse 10. You know, when we think of, a, of an ox, we instantly think of a very or an extraordinarily strong animal. That is the fact. So Ezekiel 1 verse 10 and it says, As for the likeness of their faces, they fall at the face of a man and the face of a lion and on the right side and they fall at the face of an ox on the left side and they fall also at the face of an eagle. You see, this is a description of God, of the Lord himself here. In fact, that one scripture already is, a, is, is it's actually a sermon on its own, but we're concentrating on the ox. So the Lord here is himself described as having the face of an ox or having the characteristics likened to that of an ox. So if you look at an ox, the first thing I will say, what are his characteristics and what does it, how does it apply to us? And the first thing, as I said, when we think of an ox, we think of strength, a very strong animal. An ox is actually a very strong animal. It's actually able to handle more than double its own weight in terms of pulling something. And they say for short bursts, it can take four or five times its weight. And that's an, an amazingly strong animal. In the book of Numbers, the 24th chapter, chapter of Numbers, verse 8, the Lord says, God brings them out of Egypt and, and he saw him like the, like the horns of a wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces and pierce them through with his arrows. You see, we need to always remember one of the reasons that we need to be strong we need to remember that the walk that we walk, this walk as children of the Most High God, it's not a simple walk. It's often perilous. It's treacherous. And we have an adversary. And the adversary that I'm referring to is Satan. The meaning of the word Satan is actually your adversary. And that adversary is always trying to attack you. Whether you did good or did bad, he will try to attack you. Because you're a child of God and he's the enemy of God. So we need to be strong. And as your strength comes from God, we need to understand that our strength, our strength comes from God. In this walk, if we're not strong, the weak, the weak perish. They fall easily and sometimes fall easily into a trap. We need to be strong like an ox and resilient. You know, always remember the enemy that I spoke about. He does not sleep. Is relentless in his pursuit. No matter how good you may be, no matter how bad you may be, he will attack you. He's relentless. And we have no chance of survival unless, unless we become like an ox in the spirit, which is strong. Becoming strong in the spirit like an ox, which is being immovable. Think of this huge mass of animal that's stout and if something knocks it, it's immovable, unshakable, no matter what happens. Ephesians 3 verse 16. And I pray, and I pray that he would unveil himself within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor 
that is the best passion translation, by the way, until supernatural strength flood your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Notice the word supernatural strength, which is strength from heaven, from God, from God himself. The secret to becoming strong as an ox is God the Holy Spirit. The secret to becoming strong as an ox is relying on God the Holy Spirit. We spoke so many sermons when we've preached. We always come back to the power of the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Yvonne, if you remember, that was a favorite subject, the Holy Spirit, because she had, a, she had a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. So each day, ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you with a strength like that of an ox. Uh, each day, ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you with a strength like that of an ox. Where you are strong, immovable, unshakable. You know, in ministry, there's a, there's a thing among ministers which we say, we need to have tough skin. We need, it, we, because as ministers, a lot of attacks come upon you. People uh, say all sorts of things, and it happens all the time. So you need to have tough skin. It must be like water off a duck's back. But this is applicable to all. When you come, when you talk about the strength of an ox, we all need to be strong. Because, you know, the Bible says, and this, I said this so many times. And the time that I felt the greatest impact of this when, when uh, Pastor Yvonne was called, was called to God. Um, where I've said this so many times, your life is like a vapor, like a mist. Year now and gone the very next second. And that's exactly how it is. None of us know when this is going to happen. So <clears throat> we need to be as strong as an ox. And ask the Holy Spirit in your daily prayer. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. One of the things you should be asking for. Strength from God. As the scripture that I read, supernatural strength. An explosive power. So strength, and that comes from God. You want strength from the Holy Spirit. That's supernatural strength. Another characteristic of the ox, I'm going to go through seven of them, is the temperament of an ox. A calm temperament is one of the most important requirements for an ox, having a calm temperament. For example, it can't be angry as a bull, going charging and knocking things down, or scared like a, like a horse. A horse gets scared of every little sound, or stubborn like a donkey. A, a, an ox has to have a calm temperament. See, whether it's rain or sunshine, that ox is out there in that field working. Whether it's rain or sunshine, it does not affect the ox because the temperament is so calm, it will be out there working. Your moods should not affect your walk with God. And the only way you can achieve that is when you have peace. When you have absolute peace, that perfect peace that comes from God. You're able to walk through these things. As the psalmist said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So whatever happens, you're able to withstand and walk through because your temperament, you don't suddenly blow up in anger or become stubborn like a donkey or get easily spooked and run away at the slightest attack to be enduring continually walking the calm temperament of an ox and as as children of the living God <clears throat> that can be achieved when you've got peace when you've got the absolute peace that blessed assurance that knowing that the Lord walks with you when you have that peace you are able to have a calm temperament Philippians 4 verse 7 and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus that's the peace we're talking about. So how do you have this peace? How do you keep calm when everything seems to be crashing? I remember when I was driving to the hospital to the, the final time to, because they called me there when Pastor Yvonne was um, deteriorating rapidly. And I had to drive through traffic. I couldn't start flying around and rushing through lanes and cutting things, cutting through other car, cars. I drove as calmly as I could, as calmly as I could, very, very apprehensive, very worried. I remember my mouth was very dry, 
Barakat day in one piece, without speeding and breaking any laws, having an amazing peace. That kind of peace comes from God. So how do you get the peace? As we said in Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. If you look at the 8th verse, Philippians 4, 4, verse 8, it says, so keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectable, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. And that speaks about focusing on God, focusing on the works of God and all that is good. Keep your focus on Christ at all times when things seem to be crashing around you, when things seem to be going wrong. Keep your focus on Christ because he is in control of it all. He knows what he's doing. Trust him. Trust him. You know, I was, I had, uh, some people call me and offered us counseling, things like that. <clears throat> and I've not taken them up on that. I, mean, I don't think I will be because some of them are professional counselors and we're talking about the five stages of grief. I think the seven stages, some say 12 stages. And one of the stages of grief besides uh, denial and that kind of thing and depression and acceptance is uh, bitterness and anger. And you know what? I've never felt bitter or angry at what, it is, as it, what has happened recently with Pastor Devon. Because for me to be bitter or anger, it means I'm going to be bitter and anger with God. And we dare not question God. We need to have the absolute trust and that's when the calm and the peace will come upon you. That he knows exactly and absolutely, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's never wrong. And the word of God is, whatever happens, somehow he will turn it around for your own good. So to have that kind of peace is amazing. And I must say, I'm human. So, and uh, <clears throat> I can't have that all the time. But I will have it more than 90% of the time that will enable me to overcome or surpass. I'm generally, by the way, for those of you, you know me as your, your pastor, I'm quite an emotional person. Maybe people do not realize that. I have to be. I have to, um, like the Lord Jesus himself wept. He showed so much emotion when Lazarus passed away. As a shepherd of a church, you've got to be emotional because that borders on compassion and love and mercy. You can't be a shepherd or a successful shepherd, shepherd if you're not compassionate. And from there, it sits on the seat of emotion. So you've got to have the heart to help people. That's why we do the feeding program, because we want to help people. But despite all the emotionalism, God has held me and strengthened me and took, taken me and still taken me through this time and kept me strong. So, but that, that is the peace of God. Somehow, the peace of God that comes in there, it surpasses all human understanding. When other human beings see you, they don't understand it. How can this peace, this man have so much peace? That's what it talks about, surpassing human understanding. They don't understand it. Neither do I, by the way. So I'm also human. So the peace of God. And as I said, one of the ways, Philippians verse 4 verse 8, is Focus on him, keeping your eyes fastened on Christ, never taking your eyes off him, no matter what, in the best of times and the worst of times. Always remembering your maker, the God that you serve. Focus on Christ. Thirdly, about an ox. One of the things about this remarkable beast is it's willing. It's willing to do what its master requires. It's trained. An ox is trained. And it becomes an obedient being or an obedient beast rather. An ox must have that willingness to respond to commands. It is trained, for example, to obey certain commands like stop and go or turn and things like that. And once the ox learns the commands, he obeys no problem without question. An ox obeys exactly what it's told to do without question. And that's what's expected of us. Obey without question. We spoke of obedience many times, which is don't question God. Trust him that you have absolute confidence or faith that he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows your future. 
He won't lead you astray and he knows the best for you. In Isaiah, uh, chapter, Isaiah 1st chapter 19, the verse, Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Notice, willing and willing and obedient. There is a difference just because, between just obeying and also being willing. Ask yourself, are you obeying grudgingly? Our obedience must be based on love. You know, as we've often said, so much I live my life by this principle. If you love God, you obey Him. That's it. It stops there. John 14, 21, that is. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. If you love God, you obey Him. And when you obey God because you love Him, then you do it willingly. You're not forced to. You willingly obey God because you love Him. Now, as we grow in God, like an ox as it grows with its master, and as the master trains it and teaches it, we receive training and direction as we go to church, as we get counsel from the Holy Spirit. Every time you hear a sermon, the seed that is sown into your, into your spirit, that seed grows, you start to learn and you grow in Christ. And as we learn and we love the Lord and we grow in Christ, we obey automatically. We obey automatically. We have this willingness to listen to God. It is no big feat not to steal from someone. It's a natural thing because the Holy Spirit is within you. But you now start to do these things because you love the Lord. You are willingly obeying Christ. And that's one of the greatest characteristics of an ox. The principle of obedience. It does it so willingly. And that's what we should all strive to do. To obey the Lord. To do things that please Him. And do it willingly. Not because you're scared of hell. Or going astray. Perhaps losing your salvation. But because you love the Lord. So doing it willingly. Contentment and endurance. Content, contentment and endurance. Sorry. Contentment and endurance. You know, one of the things about an ox. Another thing rather. Is it's content to do the same sort of work. Day in and day out. Every single day. As long as the ox is well. Or is, is cared is cared for and it's well fed. They work and do exactly the same thing every single day. They don't expect more food if they work harder, if the farmer made them work harder. harder. Neither is there a bonus for them at the end of the year. You see, totally different from the secular work that we now all perform. They don't get weary of doing the same thing every day because it's in that beast's head. It's doing the work for its master. It's doing it willingly. And it'll do it as long as it takes. Until it dies. Because they know that they serve their master and they're content. You see, that's the kind of attitude that we need to have. And remember, all the good work that we do for God. In the name of Jesus. Blessing someone that's poor. Helping someone. Counseling someone. Comforting someone. Phoning someone. To offer assistance. Providing a meal. Praying for someone. Whatever. When you do it in the name of Jesus, we need to learn to do it well and not get tired of it. Not getting tired. Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. One of the secrets to endurance, to, to endurance, to endurance is contentment. You see, when you're content, you are able to endure more easier rather than when you hate what you do. Then you give up easily. People that hate the job, eventually will quit the job. But when you are content and you are happy with what you're doing, you're able to do it more easily. You know, we spoke much about endurance in the past. But suffice it to say, and I've said this a number of times, never say die. Never give up. Don't give up. Continue, pursue, persevere, no matter what it takes. Because we always need to remember that God is with us. God is with you. So never give up. Continue, persevere, pursue. See, we need to be steadfast in our walk with Christ. We need to be steadfast in our walk with Christ. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brothers, 
be steadfast, immovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Whatever you do, it's been said that in everything you do, good or bad, they are like recording angels that follow you around, recording your every move. Every good that you do, it's recorded. Every bad that you do, it's also recorded. So every good that you do, and all the good labor that you do, it's been recorded. God knows it is never in vain. It is never in vain. Going on from that point, another striking characteristic of an ox, I'll call it cooperation and partnership. An ox walks alongside another ox. These two bound together, they're bound together. And these oxen, collectively, they work together. We are all called to walk together. We are all called to walk together. It pleases God actually to see his children walk together for a common goal. For those parents out there, you should be able to identify with this. You would never want your kids fighting with each other, not getting along, doing the opposite to each other. As parents, we love it when we see our children cooperating and working together, especially if it is to achieve a common goal. You know, in Luke 10 verse 1, um, Luke 10 verse 1, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two, and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. There is a reason that the Lord sent them out in pairs. There is a reason why the Lord sent them out in pairs. There is great power in numbers and unity. And also, when two people agree something in the name of Jesus, it's a very powerful force. You'll find that in Matthew 18 verse 19. And the Lord Jesus' exact words again, Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So, the one of the good characteristics of an ox, a striking one, is the ability and the willingness to work with another oxen. So we need to also take note of that. You know, we... There are times we have to go it alone. But jointly much more can be achieved. Working together with someone else means cooperation. So learning to work with others for the good of the gospel. In a church situation, more than one coming together to achieve some particular goal in that ministry. Not looking at it as competition, but rather working together. When two oxen are pulling a, uh, a, the plow, they basically walk at the same pace. If one tries to go ahead of another, the whole rhythm goes off and it doesn't work. The plow doesn't plow properly. So they have to work together. So there's no competition. They work together. Likewise, as children of God, when we are setting out to do a task, be it whatever it may be, the joint effort is what counts. There is no competition. I've seen competition in so many cases. But the idea is to work together with someone to achieve a common goal, knowing that when you are working together, the collective force of agreement or the power of agreement is a mighty force in the spirit realm. So we need to learn to cooperate with each other and work together. I must say that I've not seen this otherwise in our ministry. I thank God because I've seen people work together amazingly well. I've never seen... I think we normally would recognize that when we see a uh, we see working together is of God and competition is not of God. And as I said in a sermon a few weeks ago, competition started in heaven where Lucifer wanted to try and overthrow God or, work, or go above him. Now, when we see that the spirit of competition enters, we instantly or as fast as we can, we nip it in the bud. It should never be. It's not a competition. Neither is one greater than the other. Another thing about the ox, it's not easily frightened. As I said earlier on about an, a, a horse, it can get so spooked sometimes, it can break its boundaries and start running crazy. 
if you if you compare oxen to horses, horses are easily spooked, easily frightened. A loud noise can make an horse bolt. But an ox, when confronted with the same noise, will either stand or continue in its path, not flinching against the sound. Remember, we are in a battle, as said so often, more like a war actually. And the war that we are fighting, the battle that we are involved in, is not against flesh and blood. The spiritual enemy that we that we that comes against us has many forces, is powerful, is hideous to look at. If you look at some of these demonic faces, it will make you cringe sometimes. But we need to be believers, children of God, that can withstand the roar of an enemy. If you are standing in a spot and you're busy doing something and a lion creeps up behind you and roars and the roar of a lion can be very loud i remember years ago when i used to spend a lot of time in um about seven years ago a lot of time in kruger national park I had a group of patients there i would go once a month and they're still up the night because kruger national park was next to close to the area that i should work which was called uh, in kushle um or bush park ridge and in the still of the night, you would hear the leopard roar in Kruger National Park, which was next door. So loud was the roar. Now the roar of a lion is much louder. If a person, if you are standing still minding your own business, if a lion creeps up again behind you and roars, most people will literally jump out of the skin. 1 Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour when the devil comes and the enemy suddenly roars at you you need to be like an ox the characteristics of, of an ox will be not flinching but keep on plodding on or standing firm immovable unshakable not running away in terror like an horse for example so an ox will plod on will stand still not be moved when the enemy or any sudden attack presents itself. We need to be vigilant also in this spirit. Vigilant is being, being watchful that the enemy does not spring upon you or come up behind you, creep up behind you, being watchful. Our realization must always be that the God that you serve, the God most high, is more powerful than any force in heaven or earth. He loves you. He will deny you nothing. He can do anything for you. So no matter what the enemy may bring, the God that you serve is stronger. No need to fear. Have the faith to believe. And faith, as we know, we've spoken about this, can be equated or likened to be the spiritual opposite of fear. Faith, the spiritual opposite of fear. So not being shaken, not easily spooked. When the enemy comes against you, use the authority within you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit to defeat him. It's a spiritual war. You don't pick up a club or a knife or a gun they are spiritual weapons that you use so being strong in the spirit not being easily spooked or easily frightened lastly loyalty and faithfulness faithfulness one of the things about an ox is it the ox knows its owner okay let's read if i can get to the scripture um isaiah 1 verse 3 it says the ox knows its owner and the donkey is, is its master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Isaiah 1 verse 3. The ox is a loyal animal. It knows its master. One of the traits of Lucifer who became Satan. Is that he became a traitor against God. He repelled, rebelled against the Lord. By the same token. The opposite. One of the hallmarks of a good Christian. Is exactly opposite. As Satan is a traitor. A good Christian is loyal loyalty and faithfulness to god knowing who god is question to you today how loyal are you to god what will freeze you make you to say i'm giving up i'm throwing the towel i'm not done with this i've heard during the peak of COVID 19 that many worship leaders throughout the world had quit many pastors had quit christians have gone away because they do not know this god that they seemingly supposed to love and worship your faithfulness to god must be unquestionable your loyalty 
nothing can break it. You must be we are grafted into Christ. We must be anchored into him in, in him, sown in him, unable to be removed. No matter what happens, knowing all in your mind that God knows what he's doing. He's perfect. He's never wrong. Trust him to take you through whatever situation. That's the final thing about the ox, which is faithfulness and loyalty. Proverbs 14 verse 4. What 14 verse 4? ESV version says, it teaches us actually a valuable lesson about service in relation to the ox. It says, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of an ox to be productive, which is a stepping stone to blessing. What I'm saying to you, one of the main things about an ox is it's a worker. It goes out there and does its thing every day. We all need to pray and spend time with God, go into the secret place, go into our closet, kneel before the Lord and talk to him. That should be at least once a day. No matter how busy we are, no matter how hectic our job is, at least once a day speaking to the one that made you. At least once a day. If you have more time, then you do it more often. Now, we all should be doing that. But if that's all you do, nothing will happen. The ox, which is a powerful animal, if it's kept in the stall and well fed, no crops will be produced, nothing will be plowed, nothing will be sown, nothing will be reaped. So the most powerful animal kept in a stall will produce nothing until that ox is taken out there and it goes to work with patience, with endurance, with being willing, um, being content, and not complaining. And that is what we all need to do. For. If you want to be productive, as we read, where there are no oxen, Proverbs 14, verse 4, still on the board, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of an ox. An ox needs to be put to work to get to the abundant crop. So for some of us, for some of us, we might lack in this area. We might be in every area praying to God, speaking unto him, having great faith, being absolutely loyal. But faith without works is dead. With all the faith, nothing will happen. You can have the most powerful car, big V8 car, parked in your garage. It's just a powerful car until you take that car and start it up and go on the road. And that power is unleashed. Will it produce movement? Same token. So all these characteristics is something that we should be praying for, keeping in our minds, strengthening it, but what? Strengthening you for what rather? To go out there and do something. To go out there and do something. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'll send you a summary of this if you require, ask me. But in a nutshell, everything I've said is very simple. The thing about an ox is that it's got to be strong. So pray, ask the Lord every day. Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me. Let me be as strong as an ox in terms of my spiritual walk with you. So the first one is being strong, being willing and obedient, being content, uh, con um, content being loyal, being faithful, not being easily spooked, being aware and talking to God all the time. Let us bow our heads as we close in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the word that has been sung this morning. And I speak over every single person that's listening right now. And every person of King's Fireplace Prayer Academy. Every person, if for some reason they do not hear this message, in the spirit, I declare this message will reach them. And I ask you, Lord, upon each and every one of us, make us as strong as an ox in the spirit, Lord. That we may be strong physically like an ox. We may be strong spiritually like an ox. That, Father, that we will be a formidable force, a mighty weapon that you would use. Use us as weapons against the enemy, Lord. Strengthen us, each and every one of us. So the fiery darts that the enemy fires at us and the things that he throws at us will not spook us, will not frighten us, 
we will stand immovable, unshakable in the name of Jesus. I release this word into your spirits that it will find ground, good ground, and grow up and be prosperous. The word that has been spoken will prosper in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, wonderful Savior. And Father God, I ask you, Lord, make your face to shine upon your people, each and every one of us. May we be blessed from this Sabbath to the next Sabbath, from this Lord's Day to the next Lord's Day. May our children be blessed, our families, our homes, our marriages, our finances, our jobs, everything be blessed in the name of Jesus. And may each and every one of us enjoy each and every day the love of our Holy Father in heaven, the grace of the mighty Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship and the intimacy of the dear Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless every one of you. So, um, um, as you know, this is the last um, kind of recorded service, in a way, from next week. We are back at Boro, uh, Boro's castle. We've had so many requests of people coming and wanting prayer, and a lot of new people want to come and they've been waiting, apparently. Uh, we are easily able to accommodate all of you. We can observe all the COVID rules uh, with the full sanitization, the spacing of people, masks, and um, we're going to sanitize the place and chairs, everything beforehand, physical uh, social distancing, and temperature checks, and all of that. So that is going to be happening no matter what the service will start physically from next uh, Sunday. And um, I urge all of you to come because if you if you could go out, if you are a person that's staying home 24-7 and not leaving your house to go to the shop or to visit any family member or going anywhere for the last eight months and you still, then you've got a lot of fear in you. That's a spirit that needs to be broken. But if you're going to visit anyone, even once over the last five months, then there should be absolutely no reason why you would not be able to come to church. Because it's the same principle. We keep the rules. God is above it. And the blood of Jesus covers us. So um, I encourage all of you to come. The service will be recorded, but it will not be live. So by the evening of the Sunday, of every Sunday, it will be put up on the uh, on Facebook and the YouTube channel, but it will not be live because this it's too complicated to get that live now, and um, yeah, so that's it. So, but the prayer, ladies' meeting will continue every Tuesday via Zoom, and so too will the the prayer meeting. Uh, the end screen is going to come up now with the contact details. Should you want prayer, you're more than welcome. And um, goodbye and God bless. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys next week in person. Amen. Have a good day.